Hello, this is John, creator of the Home Oratory page and creator of this prayer corner that I refer to as the Home Oratory. Now, in this video, I would like to answer a question from one of the followers of this page. So, what's with those six main candlesticks in your home altar? Why are there six? To give you the answer, I think there's an even earlier question that we need to discuss. And that is, why are there six candlesticks found on the high altars of our churches? And what do they symbolize? First, we have to understand that there has been, and only will be, one true religion regarding the worship of the one true God that has been practiced by believers throughout history. From the time of Adam, man received from God revealed truths, and throughout the ages, the true religion has continued and will continue until the end of time. Now, beginning with Adam, the true religion continued with Abel, Seth, and Enoch. It then continued with Noah, and unto Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, and then passed unto Moses, and David, and, un and unto various prophets. Finally, the perfection and completion of the one true religion came about in the final revelation of our Lord. The true religion, therefore, ultimately traces itself back to Adam and Eve, and that this same religion from the very beginning has always been based on Christ, who is ultimately the subject of both the Old and the New Testaments. That is why Abraham, although a Jewish patriarch, can be for us Catholics, a patriarch or father in the faith. Now, recall that part of the Roman canon which reads the following. Be pleased, unto, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, and the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith. Likewise, this is why we consider Abraham a saint in the Catholic religion, his feast day, the 9th of October. Other holy men of ancient times, who were before Abraham, are also in the church's calendar, such as Noah, whose feast day is the 2nd of May, and Adam, the very first man of all, whose feast day is Christmas Eve. 24th of December. And so Catholicism is not some break off from Judaism. Rather, it is the connection with the one true religion from the time of Adam himself. Now, let's go back to the main question. Why are there six main candlesticks found on the high altars of our churches? A concept that I have borrowed and used in my home oratory. Whenever we see those six candlesticks placed on our church altars, it should remind us that it represents the menorah, the seven branch candlestick of the ancient Jews, which has now been integrated into the sacrifice of Christ. And in the case of the seventh candle in the center, it is replaced by the crucifix, the symbol of the sacrifice of Christ. Now, some traditions consider the menorah as the symbolic representation of the burning bush, where Moses heard the voice of God thundering on Mount Sinai. Therefore, the menorah would symbolize the divine light that spreads out. Remember that all salvation comes from the Jews, John chapter 4, 22, and Christ is the Great One. The Jews were once God's chosen people, but they ceased to be so when they rejected the Messiah, who had been specially promised to their forefathers. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. John chapter 1 verse 11. As a result, the Jews by and large felt the severe effects of divine justice, culminating with the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem in 70 AD. In God's divine plan, the old Jerusalem, which has been abandoned for now, was never meant to be the bride of Christ, but only the bridesmaid. 
The old covenant of the Jews has been replaced by something better, the new covenant. The Jews were the chosen people of the promise, but now Catholics had become the new Israel, the fulfillment of that promise. This is why when the altar candles are lit, those on the epistle side are lit before those on the gospel side. Now symbolically, the epistle side represents the Jews who first received the revelation, while the gospel side represents the Gentiles who received the revelation later. In the divine plan, the Lord made it known that the pagans, the Gentiles, would come to the faith. As St. Paul wrote to the Romans, but by their offense, referring to Israel, salvation is come to the Gentiles. Romans chapter 11, verse 11. And so for us who had the true religion, those of us who have received the fullness of revelation, Christ is the foundation of all time. From creation to the consummation, he is the Alpha and the Omega. As St. Paul said, Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. And this is why when the candles are lit on the altar, it is done from an inside to outside sequence. That is, starting from the candle closest to the crucifix, the symbol of the light of the world. It then moves toward the right or the epistle side. Then, returning to the middle, the candle closest to the crucifix is lit once again, then it moves from the center to the left or the gospel side. In snuffing the candles, the order is reversed. Hence, the saying, the gospel candle never burns alone. This is to show that Christ, it is Christ who enlightens all men. Now, some of you may notice that at the Pontifical High Mass, that is one that is celebrated by a bishop, a seventh candle is lighted. The seventh candle is then placed at the middle of the altar in line with the other six, hence the altar crucifix is moved forward a little, and it should be somewhat higher than the others. This is because a bishop is a representative of Christ, commissioned to bear witness to him, to speak in his name and to preserve all that has been handed down by means of the apostolic body. As Saint Ignatius of Antioch said, see that you all follow the bishop, even as Jesus Christ does the Father.